Hey everybody, welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm Brenda, this is Jim, and our channel is about working draft horses and how um, we, Jim logs with them, farms with them, they are just part of our life. So we like to share what's going on with them. Right now we are down at Jim's, uh, where he's logging at Paul Smith's College um, on their land. And I have come down to have a lunch break and just show what's going on with him here and the Percherons because we haven't showed you him working with the Percherons yet down at this lot. So um, he did bring them the other day. He's been alternating some, but he's trying to get these guys into shape a little bit. And he is just unhooking them for lunch break. Here's Kenny. Hi Kenny, how's your morning going? And here's Buck. So, for them to have their lunch break, he takes them over to the trailer and um, takes their bridles off so they can eat. And their, uh, Jim and the horses are raring to go because they've been waiting for me to get here. It is an amazing day. We've had so much nice weather lately, and this continues. Here we are in the middle of, or late October, and it's just warm, warm, warm. And we haven't had any rain for quite a while. So we're having our Indian summer, I guess you could say. These guys are ready to eat. Jim brings a hay bag every day. My job is to fill it up in the morning. And uh, they will be getting some grain and some water. They get to eat before Jim gets to eat. He said he's got a headache, he's hungry, and he, he did bring his lunch with him this morning, but he's, he's waiting for me. Okay. Horses want the most is hay. But we carry water with us. And a lot of times when we come here for lunch, they won't even drink. Kind of depends. Every horse is different. But I give them the choice. Sometimes I try to water them before I put hay there because they might have to drink if there's no hay in front of them. But generally, they are hungry. Not so much thirsty. Will they, after they've eaten a while, will they drink then? They will, but it's actually quite amazing how little the horses drink during the woods at lunchtime. I don't know why. Um, I will water them off and on all throughout the afternoon just so that they'll drink, especially on these warm days when they're sweating some. But uh, yeah, it's surprising. I, I, you would have thought they would drink more, but they really don't. So now I put them in their grain, give them their grain. This is the amount of grain we feed them at lunchtime, or approximately. I have a four quart scoop that I use, and this is not a full uh, scoop. This is like three quarters of a scoop. Um, I go up as much as a full scoop. It just depends on how much they're working. These buckets work pretty good for grain, and they can just sit here. Sometimes they'll actually eat some of their, their hay first. Uh, as you can see, it's making a mess. But, uh, generally, they, they don't. But uh, 
if they're hungry, they just go right to... Must have something in his mouth he yeah. doesn't like or something. So, He'll figure it out. <laughs> that's what we do for lunch. Um, if, we, if it's a, a cooler day, um, as we go into fall and winter, my blankets, I don't know if you saw them, they were in the trailer. Um, I use them when I travel back and forth. But also at lunchtime, if they, if I feel the need to have a blanket on, I'll put the blankets on at lunchtime. So mostly all throughout the winter, they're wearing a blanket at lunchtime. And uh, yeah, that's just about it for, for lunch. Just faster. Um, lunch routine. And so after they're done eating, which is, I will let them sit here quite often. Why you come over here? Quite often, um, what I do, it depends on the job, but like this today, um, and I've been doing this quite often, it's a fairly short skid that I'm hauling my logs out. And so I, instead of cutting and piling my logs up when I bring them out, I'll just bring them out. I got a nice big lanny to, to use. So I just let it fill up. So this is the morning's work. And uh, while the horses are eating their lunch after I've eaten mine, then I will go through and finish cutting them up and taking the skid steer and piling all the logs up. It just gives, allows them to have a longer lunch period and they can eat more hay while I'm, I'm done with my lunch, so, but I can get some work done. You got all this out this morning? Yep. That seems like a lot. Yep. Because so, that's a pretty good size log right there. Sometimes when I'm skidding a longer, actually a lot of times when I'm skidding a longer distance, I won't do it this way. I will stop every hitch and cut it up and pile it up just so the horses have time to rest. But right now it's not very far in there where I'm cutting and so um, I would, it works better to do it this way and then I cut it up and pile that lunch time. So anyways, I am starved, so let's, let's eat. So one of the reasons I'm a little bit late is that I stopped at this hot dog stand. Jim's not a huge fan of hot dogs, but there's this, um, this guy that parks across from Paul Smith's college and I talked to him today and he has been doing this for 15 years and it was almost like Grand Central Station there people pulling in and out, out to get a hot dog so I asked him if I could take a, a picture of his little hot dog stand and he let me so how's your hot dog it's good good I've, as you can see it's kind of red we have um, what's called glazier dogs in our area, glazier hot dogs, or specialty hot dog that people from the North Country like to eat. So I was surprised that he had, I was glad to see that he had them there. But anyways, we can't live on a steady diet of hot dogs, but every once in a while. I definitely won't want to, but once in a while they're good. Yeah. Well, Jim's done with his hot dog and now he's on to a roast beef sandwich. Last night, um, homegrown. I, huh? Homegrown. Yep, I made a roast yesterday, and it's hard to figure out what to put in his lunch for him. But keep the same. I don't like to buy a bunch of lunch meat and stuff. But anyways, we usually cook up a roast or something, and he has that. Or make ham salad or something like that. Works for me. Yep. I'm enjoying some remnants from the garden some carrots. We got big carrots this year. Radish. Peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> homemade bread. It's I love homemade bread, but it's surprising how much more filling homemade bread is compared to store-bought bread. So sometimes when she has a if the slices aren't thin enough, it's uh it really fills you up fast. So have the horses sweated all today? I'm kind of steaming at one point. I can't believe how warm it is. Man, all days. Kenny, you want any water?
Feel better now that you got some food in your belly? Good. Gonna take a nap? I'd like to. <laughs> I'd like to take a nap. I suppose you can do the rest of the work this afternoon while I take a snooze. Not a chance. <sighs> Knowing him, he will. He'll fall asleep in 2.2 seconds. He's probably already asleep. I'll just sit here and eat my last cookie. Chocolate, no bakes. We just wanted to share with you in the last video when the colts were castrated, we just mentioned that we were going to share some extra footage with our patrons. And um, it seems like there was a little confusion in the comments. Uh, once again, thank you guys all for your comments. We do read them. But um, pa Patreon is set up so that you can give as little or as much as you want a month one five ten dollars a month is what it's pretty average or you can give a one-time fee but it seems like some people thought you had to give a whole bunch of money to be on patreon and we certainly only want people to share if they want to share you know and we we do use that for equipment and just um, operating expenses and things like that and we do thank you so much for everybody who's doing that but i just kind of wanted to clear that up because i don't want people to feel like um it's some kind of club where you got to give a whole bunch of money to be part of it and it's it there's a, some perks to being a to doing that also uh like for example this video on the colts being castrated showed more of it but also there's a few other things once in a while we don't do a lot but once in a while we do some special things for the patrons yeah we don't do as much as we should and we will try to get back to doing that more just giving extra little clips or we did a uh, question and answer session so anyways we just wanted to share that with you it's just it's more people just willing to help support our channel and we appreciate yeah. it yep and just while we're talking about this kind of stuff i just wanted to share with you we've got tons of calendars left and um, also if you haven't signed up for our newsletter once again that is free and um, comes out on tuesdays and just gives a few pictures and so on that are not on the videos well i gotta get my lazy butt out of this chair i'd rather just sit here and take a nap but uh, i gotta get to work gotta make hay while the sun shines make make logs get you logs know, in while that's the another thing i'd like to talk about actually now you brought that up. Um, a lot of people have to deal with this, but I've just been struggling, I guess, a little bit of late because um, we've had such beautiful weather. And so I, I want to be up here logging. And there's several reasons why I want to be logging here. They, this, they get a lot of snow up here in the mountains. And I may not choose to log all winter up here because so much snow. Um, when I was younger, I used to deal with that snow all the time, but it's an awful lot of work. And so I may or may not work here all winter because of the snow. So because of that, I need to get as much wood out now as I can. Also, the mills are really hurting for pine. So this is the time to push the pine in. So that's what we're trying to do. But on the, uh, the other side of this coin is the fact that there's a bunch of things on the farm I could and should be doing. And so I'm drawn between the farm and logging. And right now logging is winning and but even so, there's a few things on the farm I still have to do. I did get my plowing done. I would have liked to plow more, um, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Our wood supply is in pretty good shape. Um, my Amish neighbor has helped a couple days last week, and he's supposed to help a, like a half a day this week. So he's a, a big help when he's available, but that's not an awful lot. So anyways, it's I'm sure a lot of people have to deal with the same problems, but uh, yeah, we're, we're torn between the farm and logging, and right now the logging is winning, and we're trying to get as many logs out as we can. Um, last video I think I shared, we ended up, um, got five uh, uh, triaxle loads out of here so far. We've got another load and a half sitting right there. And uh, yeah, we're doing good here, 
Um, we hope to get the excavator and the wagon in here so I can get the stuff that's down farther in. With that, um, a lot going on and a lot to share with how we're doing things. So anyways, let me get this landing cleaned up and we'll go get a, a hitch out for us. Man, that sun is hot. Unbelievable. Lunch time's over. We'll just put our stuff away. And we'll put the bridles on them. And then we'll head back out and get a hitch. You guys ready to go back to work? These are the new bridles that I got for the other new harnesses. Um, I decided to use them on the Pertrons. I don't really love them to tell you the truth, but I need to take them back up and shorten up my check reins. They're way too long. But that's a minor problem. Look at Buck, he's got his rope over his nose. He's so cute, he's licking up the Oh, it's from the trailer. So do you do you like the bridles themselves? Yeah, I they're all right. I'm really fussy when it comes to bridles. And he did a fine job. I'm not saying he didn't, but just something about them that just don't quite suit me. My uh, leather ones that I have on the Belgians, I like those. And uh, I had one other pair years ago I really liked. But I'm just pretty particular when it comes to bridles. You mean how they look or their function? How they look. I guess that's a preference thing. Yeah. For sure. Maybe on an upcoming video, I will talk about blinders on bridles. That would be good because we've had a lot of questions. We have. Thank 
Since this is state, well, it's not state land, it's private land, I guess, right? Yeah. It's Paul Smith's land, so, but can people hunt on here? They can, because this particular piece of property, um, John the Forester was telling me when they, when Paul Smith purchased this piece of property years ago, there was some sort of a, a easement on it. So, uh, so people can use this land to, for hunting, for hiking. Um, so, um, yeah, they are allowed to come on here and use it. We could, he said, if I wanted to shut it off for when I'm logging, we could put a sign out front saying no trespassing while I'm here. But there's some trees out back that actually on the state land. A lot of people, a lot of people like to go out because they're, I guess they're the tallest trees in New York state. They're not that far from here, about a half a mile, three quarters of a mile. And sometime Brendan and I'll have to walk out there and look at them. But, um, so because of that, people are traveling through here to go out there. And I don't mind people coming through. But you haven't seen anybody that um, looks like they're hunting, have you? No, but I talked to the neighbor and he does hunt. Matter of fact, a couple days ago he asked what time I'd be leaving because he wanted to go out and hunt. <laughs> Which I have no problem with. Yeah, he probably doesn't like having you here. <laughs> no, I don't think that is. Grab a tree for a hitch I'll cut, so we'll go hitch under that. Do you ever, does that ever get caught on something and like stop them dead? Uh, Probably not stop them dead, but does it? It's possible. As you see, they slipped off even now. But let me explain a couple things. So this top log right there was from that butt right there. You can see it over there. Then I put it that way and I, I hitched on the whole tree and started pulling around here. I couldn't make it around this corner, so I had to cut it in half, which is, is normal. <laughs> And then I have another big tree over there that I cut down and I took the, an eight footer and a, a 12 footer off that. It was a kind of a crooked thing. So now I just have the top log and it's a pretty good sized piece still. So we'll back in there and get that. And then I got a new trail up here that will go up around and up to the next trees up there. And that's, we'll cut one of them next. But I wanna hitch onto that tree out there and get that one out of there.
on to roll these limbs that were down in the ground up so now I can clean them up and we can take it out. This hitch here is still even too long to get around that corner so I'm going to have to kind of head off to our left and go part way and then I'm going to have to stop and, and actually cut it into two pieces to be able to get around that corner but I'll show you in a second. the stump and the wedge. Like I said, I know it's not going to be around that corner, so I'm going to shorten it up, get a tighter hitch, go a little ways, and then I'll decide where to cut it. Back, guys. Back. 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 This is going to work just fine. If I was a long ways to landing and I wanted a bigger hitch, I might do something different. But it's just a little ways to landing, so there's no sense hauling a big load if I don't in a situation like this. So, since I have the top log from the last tree sitting right there, I would just go back to about that point, and then I can come and grab both those pieces and run it right down. This wood on the upper side of the landing above the truck here where I'm at right now is a lot poorer quality wood than the stuff down below. Um, so it's making for a lot of shorter, shorter logs to keep them straight. And it's actually a little bit challenging to make straight logs. So poor quality because they're, they're crooked? Well, they're crooked and they're also bully. In other words, they've got a lot of limbs on them. Yeah. Down, down below where I first started, the quality was so much better because they were nice, tall, straight stuff with very few limbs. And why do you think that is? Uh, that's something the forester might be able to answer, but not me. So I'm going to cut a 10 foot there. And then, boy, not that great. Um, where was that 10? Right there. So do some of these poor... I'm going to cut another 10 foot right here, so that's 21. I like to cut 6 inches of trim on all my stuff. So, okay. so um, like this log looks pretty poor. Do you think There's it'll... There's two logs here. There'll be a, probably a 12 and an 8 foot at the butt log. Will they call them when they get to the mill, you think? Well, um, 
Paul Smith College has a sawmill, and so they actually teach. Um, we need to talk more about actually Paul Smith College, what they do, but it's a, it's a forestry school. So they teach forestry, they teach um, mechanical logging, they actually teach a little bit of horse logging, they're starting to back, do that again. But they also have a couple sawmills. They got a circle mill and they got a bandsaw. So um, we're sort of thinking a lot of this poor quality stuff will actually go back to the school yeah. mills and it's, it's great stuff for kids to learn on because right. if you make a mistake, it's not a big deal. It's a waste. Whereas to sell them to a, a mill, they might be cold pretty heavily because of the quality. So I've got another uh, tannin and an eight here. So that's what we'll do. It's still going to be actually kind of a hard spin around that corner as you'll see in a minute. You guys are acting very sensibly. Kudos to you. Can you guys hear the wind in the trees? Okay, right. so that's going to do it for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed our lunch time at the at the log job, and uh, we're going to go now back and cut some more trees. Thanks for coming along.